It's time for the Teed Off Podcast. Okay, it is episode 14 of the Teed Off Podcast. I'm Ben Clyburn, and I'm here with my co-host, Aaron Thomas. Aaron, how's it going today, man? Good, Ben. How you doing today? Pretty good. A little bit cloudy, but could definitely play some golf today. It's it's tolerable. I can say that. Yeah. Yeah, we had a 70-degree weekend, so... I guess that was probably a little spoil on us in uh, January. I got to take advantage of it, so I uh, I can attest it was very nice. Uh, great yeah. golf weather uh, in the winter time in Myrtle Beach. We're joined. Uh, our special guest today is Jake Benton. He is the head PGA professional at Arrowhead Country Club. Jake, thanks for sitting in with us, man. Yeah, thank you for having me. Excited to be here. Yeah, we're gonna have fun. I'm gonna go over the agenda of the show today. Front nine, the world of golf. Uh, talk about an amateur winning a PGA Tour event. I, don't think I was alive the last time that happened, so that's pretty cool. We'll talk about that. Liv stays in the news. Um, another big name is Crossed. Other big names are in the hopper, and uh, there's some money floating around. Let's We'll chat about that, see how that will affect 2024 professional golf or not. And then uh, Tiger Woods was not uh, homeless for long for a, a clothing brand. He's got one, and we'll discuss that in that uh, gorgeous new logo. I have, I have an opinion. <laughs> yeah, so um, then we'll make the turn. It'll all be about Jake Benton and Airhead Country Club. Talk about how you got into the game of golf and how you ended up uh, at Airhead. And then uh, talk about the course itself, what makes it special. It's so popular amongst uh, Myrtle Beach travelers and golf packages. And we'll talk about the golf package of the episode where you can book Airhead Country Club. Then we'll jump on the back nine. Talk about a spring rounds update and uh, how the fall's shaping up for golf in Myrtle Beach. The accommodations of the episode. We actually have two this episode. And uh, some cool stuff to do off the course. We don't do that enough. And, uh, you know, this is the golf capital of the world. But you play golf during the day. And uh, there's some cool stuff to do at night um, that you may not think about. So we're going to have a section talking about that in this episode. And then last but certainly not least, what tees us off. You guys ready to jump in? Let's do do it. it. All right. The Front Nine. Okay, The Front Nine. Well, not too long ago, uh, amateur Nick Dunlap uh, with a Saturday 60 and held on on Sunday uh, was the first amateur since 1991, Phil Mickelson, to win a PGA Tour event. He won the Amex Championship. What are you guys' initial thoughts on that? I, I thought it was great. Um, I personally didn't get to watch a lot of it. I mainly saw highlights, but it sounded like the, uh, of course, there was a little bit of dramatic fashion, I think, in getting the win too. But yeah. uh, kind of need to see something, you know, something different that the game of golf, uh, yeah, it needs it needs some good publicity right now, you it know? It sure, sure does. Well, Jake, what do you think yeah. about it? Yeah, I mean, it's exciting. Anytime somebody that's unknown or unexpected comes out and wins, it's a big deal. And I thought it was cool that he fell behind actually on Sunday and was able to kind of hang in there and, and end up coming out on top. I think so, too, because it, it could have been just a cool story, which it would have been, you know, shooting a, a Saturday 60, you know, is great for any player. But to be an amateur and be on top of the leaderboard, you see that sometimes even in majors, you know, being close to the top of like the Masters leaderboard on Thursday or Friday. And then they usually, you know, the, the cream of the crop rises to the top. But um, he stayed up there and he, he faltered. Nellie Corda did, you know, this past weekend, too. She she fell off the lead and got it back um, on Sunday. So it was cool to see him win in that way. Um, Aaron, you mentioned earlier. Uh, the only uh, bad thing was he couldn't collect a big check at the end. Poor guy, man. One Was it $1.5 million? Yeah. He just, I mean, it's that close. It's like, just give it to me. Yep. And yeah, he couldn't couldn't accept it because he wasn't pro. The only, the only thing I think, though, is that he has now gone professional. And I'm pretty sure some apparel or uh, equipment manufacturer inked him a $1.5 million bonus. So I don't think he missed it for long be curious to see if he has american express on any of his shirts in the near future he almost has to yep. instead of he didn't get his 1.5 maybe they give him a little sponsorship you, you know do something to make something that right that could be a great commercial yeah. listen 
and this costs one point five million dollars. Well, I don't have that, but I do have this. Yeah. The MX black card. <laughs> don't leave home without it. That would be perfect. Amateurs don't always win golf tournaments, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> but when they, when do, they do they carry American yeah. Express. <laughs> Amex, if you'd like to contact us, we're at teed off podcast at gmail dot com. Uh, we will take credit for that and just a small royalty. But, uh, yeah, I just wanted to touch on that because that, that was really newsworthy. I know we're in the early part of the year, and everything kind of builds toward um, Augusta. And there's some Live Golf and PGA Tour stuff we're going to talk about. But it's just that was a nice, refreshing, cool moment, I think, in golf and a good way to kick off the year. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing, good way to start the year. Um, and, uh, you know, just a good story. You know, like I said, the tour, the tour needs good stories right now. They do. And, and let's get into not necessarily a bad story, but it's just more of uh, the continuing big names jumping to live. Terrell Hatton, uh, number 16 player in the world, I believe, has jumped over to live golf. He's going to play on John Rahm's team, which is starting to fill out. Um, what were y'all's initial thoughts on Terrell Hatton moving over? I'm not even surprised anymore. Um, I, I mean – Rom surprised me when it happened, but that's probably the last big surprise I'm going to have from it because at this point, it seems like everybody's intermingling. It's it's being more accepted by tour players. Rory softened his stance. It's I don't think there's there's any surprises that they can really have now because it seems like everything is kind of starting to intertwine and everybody's more accepting of everything. Roy so. certainly has uh, softened his stance. Yeah. I mean, almost 180 degrees. It's well, weird. when your Ryder Cup horse is uh, questionable for the next Ryder Cup, I would too. And now Hatton, and it's, you know, he's looking on the other side saying, well, my, my boys are over there. <laughs> so maybe we don't punish them when they come back. <laughs> uh, soften that stance a little bit. Yeah. What Other names in the mix, uh, Wyndham Clark, you know, he's – had a good year. I don't think he's a big marketable name. So if he goes, um, that would make sense to me. It sounds to me like that one has completely fallen through, though. Most recent info I've read. Okay, is what I is what I've heard. That's. Uh, uh, yeah, I'd he, rather have Tyrrell. Yeah, I mean, if he did, I think for him, if he did go, it would be the time because his stock is probably as high as it's ever been, and we don't know much about him besides a good year last year. So, yeah. uh, if he did, I I think. That would be the time he'd probably get his biggest payday. But. Cash in while your stock's yeah. hot. Yeah. yeah. Um, Jake, what about the Anthony Kim rumors? Does that spur you at all? Do you not care? I mean, it's exciting to hear his name, see what maybe comes of it. I think his route to the PJ Tour could be harder. Um, so, would not shock me at all for him to go to live. I mean, that would make a lot of sense, honestly. The story. I believe historically was that he was a phenom, you know, 08, 09, 2010, and then 11 and 12 plagued by injuries and kind of stepped away from the game because he had an insurance policy that was, would have been void if he would have gone back to play. If you go back on the PGA tour, you get what a year medical exemption, but you have to finish at certain standing. So there's a lot of pressure there. And if he did that, his insurance policy would be void. So, and I'm thinking it was like, 35 million dollars last time i remembered so that that's you know life and death really financially yeah. so i can see why he's had to kind of stay not even on the back burner i mean he's not even in the kitchen he, when you have an ak sighting you know it's like whoa is he coming back no way but now there is a way to get some some major bucks come back and have no risk and I don't see why he wouldn't do it. Yeah, seems like a no-brainer to me, honestly. And I hate to even say it, when it first surfaced, like, it took me a minute with the name. I'm like, Anthony Kim. Like, it's been that long yeah. since we've heard it. And I was like, huh? And so it, it, that one took me by surprise. But Does he still have the record at Augusta for most birdies in a round? Mm. I think he had 11 in, like, 2010 or something in one round. That, and a double bogey. Uh, I'd, I'd need Google to confirm yeah, that because yeah. I yeah that's a stat I don't I don't know I just I always liked Anthony Kim I mean that 08 Ryder yeah. Cup was so cool yeah he's an exciting player yeah. for sure so and he was he was a personality that was kind of the not as from a play but like the next Tiger personality where people gravitated towards him so yeah I I had to kind of he had been on a Wheaties box for me or a milk carton 
now Wheaties box, a milk carton for a long time. Where's AK? <laughs> he was on a Wheaties box, then a milk carton. <laughs> so be cool to have him back. So we'll see. Could just be more rumors. Yeah. But there's now, I think, a vehicle for him to get paid, which would get him off the couch. So we'll see about that. Um, with Liv and PGA, there's some money – being swapped around that's not from the PIF. So I think just uh, almost just now, a $3 billion cash, $12 million billion uh, value infusion has come from the Strategic Sports Group, which has a lot of uh, professional, domestic professional sports team owners involved. And uh, that's gone directly to the PGA Tour. And um, $900 million of that is going to be equitable shares to – the players, which they'll get ranked by their ranking. It's going to be shared by amongst about 180 guys. What do you guys think of that? Because I've heard the, you know, that the PIF and the PGA are in their final stages, but there's going to be regulatory issues where that money is still not, they're still not done with that. Mm -hmm. So do you think that this, this money infusion helps things or hurts things? Because it, it could help because it doesn't, it means that the PGA isn't totally dependent on the PIF, but it could hurt because it just, to me, extends the time that we're going to have our players separated. I, I want to say it, it's probably more help for the short term until they get this hammered out um, and get everything situated with the PIF. But, um, and I, I can't speak. I know I read this, and I read it briefly this morning just trying to catch up to see what it was. But it, it does sound like there's some long-term investment involved with the PIF that I it didn't give any details as far as all of this being together. So I, I think short-term, it helps. But these investors are in it for the long-term, obviously, with what they're doing. So. Jake, do you think it's good or bad? Yeah, I mean, same thing. I, I agree. Short term, it's probably good, especially for the players. But long term, especially as fans, you want them to get together sooner than later. That's kind of the biggest thing about Liv, in my opinion, is that it's just kind of watered down the fields and sp spread the players around. So I think eventually we all want them to be playing together. I think so, too. I mean, at, as this continues, you know, couple years ago or last year we were like well we're only going to see them four times a year but if this continues a couple years exemptions are going to be gone for some of those guys on live where we're never going to have the top fields and that's that's disappointing uh when you have so many great players in their prime so i hope a deal gets done soon i am glad that this money's coming in and almost a billion dollars is being shared amongst the players maybe that'll stop some bleed uh, from some other players going over because John Rahm's got to fill out his team and he hasn't done it yet. And uh, I think they need one or two more big names uh, to get some, some better ratings and better viewership. So I'm sure there's names in the list we didn't mention that are being spoken to as we speak. What's wild to me is that it is still like a unanimous decision that Jay Monahan is going to be the head of this thing. Yeah. When they get it together. I, I still say that's all talk. Yeah. It's just me. But I think it's just the he's going to be the face of it and, until the deal is done and boom, gone. Yeah. What about Greg Norman? No. No, I, I really think they're going to need somebody. I, I, I want to use the term new blood. I think they're going to need somebody new um, just from both sides. There's There's been bad, bad blood from – Greg Norman and Liv, there has been from Monahan and the players. There's a lot of players I don't think trust him a whole lot right now. So I think they get all this done. I think there, I think somebody new will be appointed. I think he stays, he he rides through it, helps get the deal done, and I think he steps aside probably with a nice paycheck. They need a player friendly guy at the helm, in my opinion. Greg Norman never really got along with anybody, and then Jay doesn't have the trust. I don't think he'll ever get it back. So. You know, like a Steve Stricker or something would be cool. I don't think Fred Couples, who would be perfect, has any <laughs> desire to do it. No. Um, but Steve Stricker would be cool. So, and I, I don't know if he has any desire, but I'm just trying to think of recent President's Cup or Ryder Cup captains that are liked by the players and are also on the other side of their career that could spend the time. 
Although Steve's ripping up the Champions Tour, so yeah, <laughs> yeah as you say, I think he's in pretty good shape. So uh, there's, I mean, you'd have to almost look at like some past Ryder Cup captains or something like that, where players would have, uh, uh, you know, obviously a, a good trust in them. But well, Paul Azinger needs a job. Yeah, Maybe him. True. <laughs> you got a Davis Love. Davis yeah, Love. Davis would be Love. Great. Yeah, Davis Love. Yeah, but. Um, yeah, I, I, just, there's gotta be new blood though. I, yeah. I just see it happening. So I agree. Well, we'll see what shakes out. I mean, you know, this episode will drop and there will be more news <laughs> that'll pack the next episode. Yeah. So. It's uh, it, it might even surpass the episode. Yeah. It could be new before it. Yeah. We might comes have to out. have an emergency <laughs> pod. So, um, if we're in different shirts and in <laughs> and, and this part of the show, then something else has come out. Um, Tiger Woods, who is still the face of the game and still the face of the PGA Tour, even though he hasn't played uh, in a tournament in, in quite some time. He'll be teeing it up pretty soon. Um, it left Nike Golf. And uh, there was the last episode we were saying, well, what's he going to do? Who's he going to sign on with? Is he going to come up with his own brand like Tom Brady did? So Taylor made um, applied for... Uh, trademarking for uh, Sunday Red apparel, and it's this silhouette of a tiger, which took me a while to figure out what that was. What do you guys think of that brand, that idea that Taylor made is done, and what do you think of the logo? First of all, get the logo off of the clothes. I'm sorry. I love tiger, but that logo, no go. Yeah. I mean, I said in the last episode, they, they're not going to get the TW. Nike owns that. Yeah. So they're gonna have to figure that out somewhere down the line. And it's it is it is a wonder that they weren't, or maybe Tiger was not able to work something out with Nike, uh, because Nike's not gonna be doing. You know, I I don't know if they're even gonna continue doing clothes into the future as far as apparel for golf, because it sounds like they're kind of moving on to different things as well. So it's a wonder Tiger couldn't work out the logo, because that I'm sorry that is tiger woods yeah you know? it is yeah i mean i'll be curious to see what everything looks like and what all they exactly they're gonna do I was, I was reading a little bit about like they're gonna do some accessories and stuff like that and shoes obviously so kind of curious to see what comes of it but i didn't know who he what he was gonna do or what he was gonna choose i, I was thinking of existing brands and didn't really know like what his road would be but i guess it does make a lot of sense with his partnership already with taylor made so and I was thinking Bridgestone was going to make some clothes or nah, something. I'm not shocked that it's tailor-made doing it. I'm not so. either. No. And something I'll point out that it should be worked out. WWE just gave The Rock his name. Yeah. So he now owns his name. Yeah. And that, that made a lot of money for WWE for years and years. You'd think Nike would work with tiger a little yeah. bit all the money he's made them yeah. but i don't know i mentioned last time it took years and years for roger federer to get his name so i, I don't know but that is such an iconic thing it's and everything for a price it's and, and maybe i'll may you know maybe the logo will grow on me but i think it's just now nah. i've grown up with the tw and it's like i can't it, i don't I'm know hoping. It, i think of a cheetah or however it i know what it is it's supposed to be a tiger but I think of like the um, the, the car logo, uh, like Jaguar. Oh yeah, yeah. That's what I think but of. But you when know I what though, it. a Jaguar, that logo is elegant and sleek. Yeah. And this, this is, is like this dots. Is like, yeah, it's like and dots. I don't. I'm a gamecock, so I don't want a paw print. <laughs> Easy. Easy. So I can't. I can't do that. Even if it's red, you know that. I guess that would be a compromise. I'm guessing you're a tiger. Right. So we'll there would be a compromise if it was a red paw print. Why not just like tiger stripes, like red, red and black tiger stripes, yeah. like on? I'm on thinking a like the silhouette of a tiger face or something like That'd that. Cool. The tiger's yeah. tiger's eye or something like that. But maybe this is just a trademark for the overall brand, and it's gonna have a sub sub logo for for. Tiger. I like Sunday Red. I like the name. I, yeah, I think that, that's cool. That's uh, that's iconic. Yeah. Everybody knows what Sunday Red is. You say if you say um, if you're not even a golfer and you say Sunday Red, yeah. somebody's going to know Tiger Woods. Yeah. So, I don't I, I just uh a lot of people uh, kind of let the public forum make the decision for you. Taylor Mates paying attention. Nobody likes it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, I, I so. haven't I haven't gone on Twitter World to see all like cuz a lot of times when stuff like that comes out I'm, I'm not a big Twitter person, or I'm sorry, X, uh, because it can be comical to read, 
but I haven't gone on to look at any of the feedback that's on that's on X currently. Well, it's, it's uh, explicit. Is it? <laughs> yeah, and pretty direct. So they're they're they won't have to do any heavy marketing research, in my opinion. <laughs> so, so so they can't put it on a T-shirt. <laughs> Maybe it would look good blown up. Uh, I, Small, it looks terrible. But, yeah. you know, I'm thinking, like, all of our shirts has got a little logo here. Real small. You're not going to know what the heck it is. When it first came out, I thought I was looking for, like, like Easter eggs. I thought it was, like, SDR written in there yeah. or something or, like, TW. It's like a connect the dots yeah. or something. Yeah. So, yeah, it's like an ink blot test or something. It's just not. Hopefully, that is just a trademark thing to stamp and get through, and it's going to be on the tag of the clothes and the apparel, not actually customer facing but yeah it's we'll uh, see it, like i said the tw is so iconic it, it i don't think it matters what logo they come up with people weren't gonna like it yeah it's uh that's this, true. this one's not great but i mean i still think anybody would have said it's just not May, the TW. but at the same time they're gonna buy it because his name's on it yeah this well I, i'm gonna buy it regardless what it is but maybe that was a strategy i don't know they i haven't like, seen any prices yet i'm not yeah, buying yeah, anything true. just that's yet true. <laughs> that's true designer pricing but yeah, you know, the T-Dub is so iconic. Maybe in the market, you know, in the design meeting, they were like, you know what? It's going to be really hard to come up with something that is going to be so eye-catching and iconic. So let's just make something look really bad. Do something completely you know? opposite. <laughs> yeah, we're talking about it. Yeah, so that's true. That's true. Yeah. That is true. That's true. That's a good point, Jake. And I'll say, I've seen people wear some ugly stuff. Yeah. So, I mean. Yeah. It's... Yeah. So we'll see. So it's a fun thing to end the front nine on because it is – um, obviously the biggest name in golf and uh, it's always a topic he's always a topic of conversation so when he's coming out with something new it's it's worth talking about yeah and I mean obviously I want it to go well because any anything Tiger does if it goes well it's just good for golf yeah it is true all right guys well that ends the front nine uh, let's make the turn and Jake let's uh, talk about uh, Arrowhead Country Club and your experience in Myrtle Beach Golf Planning an unforgettable Myrtle Beach golf getaway has never been easier with mbgolf.com. At mbgolf.com, we give you the power of choice in pairing world-class golf with premium options from golf course villas to oceanfront condominiums brought to you by Condo World, the leaders in Myrtle Beach luxury travel. Make your next stay and play journey to the golf capital of the world the experience of a lifetime. It's all just a call or a click away. Making the turn. All right, let's make the turn. And we have Jake Benton, the head PGA professional at Arrowhead Country Club, sitting in with us today. Jake, tell us about how you got into the sport of golf and how you ended up in the golf industry in Myrtle Beach. Yeah, so uh, actually born and raised here in Myrtle Beach. Not many of us, but uh, nope. grew up here. Rare and, breed. Yeah, and uh, my dad introduced me to the game at an early age. I honestly don't even know how old I was because I don't remember. I was I was young, but uh, loved it. And then I was dragging him out to the course, playing in a lot of junior stuff in the state, and then uh, went to Myrtle Beach High School and played high school golf there and was good but not good enough playing college and I always wanted to go to Clemson so I went to Clemson when I got there didn't know what major I wanted to choose kind of switched a few times um, and ended up going to the PGM program so professional golf management ended up graduating from that before that though I came back to Myrtle Beach and you have to do 18 months internship so interned at Arrowhead a few times and also at Caledonian True Blue um, for a few months as well so I knew I was coming back home um, to work and wasn't sure what I was going to do, but wanted to do my internships here in the Myrtle Beach market. Uh, so came back home, was actually working in the construction business and at the golf course, doing a little bit of both. And then the opportunity came for me to work at the golf course full time. And um, my family's involved in the golf industry. So uh, it was kind of a no-brainer, and, and from there I've been uh, in this position now for eight years. So Oh, wow, great. It's, uh, it's been a fun ride. All at Airhead Country Club? Uh, yep. Uh, graduated from school in 2015, was there for a little less than a year, and then got the head pro job, and uh, all at Arrowhead besides my internships, like I said, at Caledonian True Blue. That is awesome. Well, 
I'm a native of North Myrtle Beach, yeah. so and and you're a Clemson Tiger. I'm a Gamecock, and I went to all the North Myrtle Beach schools. <laughs> so we've we're just on rivals all the way. Yeah, we have been. But um, I tell you where we agree on is uh, how great Airhead Country Club is. So give us a little history of the course there. What makes it special? Yeah. So uh, it was in 1994. Tom Jackson and Raymond Floyd design. Um, try to create a family environment, a fun environment to visit. And uh, one of the biggest things I think that we do that's kind of unique, uh, we oversee wall to wall. So when you come, no matter the time of year, you're going to see green grass completely, the rough tees, fairways, uh, greens, everything's going to be green. And, and people really like that, especially coming in early spring. Uh, they're coming up from up north when it's been brown, everything, seeing snow, and they want to see green grass. So I think that's one of the biggest things uh, that, that excites people to play Arrowhead. Yeah, I mean, playing on dormant grass, if it's in good shape, is fun, but uh, you can't beat green grass. And, of course, it's in great shape. Aaron, you can attest to Arrowhead always being in great shape. I can because uh, I am somewhat of an honorary member at Arrowhead you? as much as I play there. Okay. Yes. So Jake knows, Jake sees me quite a bit. So it's, uh, it's close to my house, and it is one of my favorite courses in the area. Um, all, all three nines, um, I can't say enough about because they're always in good shape and I do play some pretty good rounds there. So that helps, you know, yeah. me say it's a good course too. When so. it agrees with your game. It does. Exactly. Yeah, it does. Now there's a couple holes I'm not a fan of, but that's, <laughs> I think that's any course, but they're the, the golf course is always in great shape and it is. It's been, you guys have been doing the, uh, wall to wall, uh, overseed for a couple of years now, haven't right. you? Forever, honestly, yeah. The owners are big believers in that, mm -hmm. and, and uh, it's it's been good. I th I think it does. It is one thing that we can kind of say we do, and and uh, it's kind of a selling point that we can use. So, um, yeah, it's been good for us, and we we believe in it for sure. Yeah, and there's only a handful of courses in the Myrtle Beach area that do that. So it's it's a very small, select group of courses that that do that overseeding. Well, nice. the investment in yeah. that is 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 proven because yeah. uh, you get a lot of golfers on your course so and and you do year after year so what type of greens are at airhead country club oh uh, we have mini verde bermuda so we've had those uh since before my time but they've been good and, and uh proven to be true and, and consistent so. yeah a great and, grass for the spring and summer and very fast on occasion yes <laughs> yeah we can get them fast we try not to get too crazy because it can be a pace of play issue but true they they roll good and they're uh usually around a 10 to 11 for yeah. the most part yeah, that's they great they're, they're good the greens are good pure and green aaron give us the golf package of the episode uh where you can play arrowhead country club well arrowhead is part of the elite package um which features four courses here in the area uh it's arcadian shores uh arrowhead tidewater and Prestwick country club the elite package is great because they do offer a true early booking discount so they have a six if you book outside of six months the bigger discount you get and then inside of your three to five month range you get another discount as well so the earlier you book the bigger the discount you can get uh, on those rates for those courses and there is uh, it's just you don't have to play all four I recommend you do because they're great courses but um, is a two-round minimum um, on that package to play it. And uh, in addition, their bonus is um, you can do nine, they do free nine-hole replays um, same day at the golf course. So you can get a little extra golf in if you want with those rates. Wow, that's great. And it's great to have, a, you know, a discount by your threshold of, of booking uh, because you want to book those courses early anyway because they're so premium. Uh, they're some of the most highly requested courses. Definitely Arrowhead Country Club is. So book it early. Uh, to make sure you get a tee time, but it's going to have your, your best value. Yeah, it does. Um, and that's been, uh, that's kind of been the, the thing that Myrtle Beach has been lately or for the uh, last couple of years. Book early because the rates are going up as they book more rounds. So yeah, Remember, guys, when you go to mbgolf.com or call and talk to Aaron or his team to ask about the Elite Package and Arrowhead Country Club. Uh, we're here with Jake Benton, the PGA professional of Arrowhead Country Club. Jake, what is the signature hole at Arrowhead? So our signature hole, we actually have three nines, um, but our overall signature hole would be waterway number five. Uh, it's one of our most generous landing areas on the whole golf course, but it does have intercoastal to the left. 
Uh, it runs all the way down uh, throughout the entire hole. Um, there's a bunker in the landing area on both sides, so you can find some trouble, but you don't have to hit your driver there. Um, but it's just a beautiful hole. Like I said, it runs all the way down the intercoastal, and, and that's probably what most everybody wants to see when they visit us. Certainly a picturesque hole. Would that be one of the more challenging holes on the course or uh, more about views or a good combination of the two? I would say mainly about the views. Like I said, it is a generous landing area for us. We aren't the most wide open course, but it can be challenging, especially depending on pin positions there. But overall, that one's for, for sure a view hole. Wind can come into play on that hole. Absolutely. That can be a, that can be the challenge on that hole some days because that wind, especially with the waterway, can yeah. shift around on you a little bit. Um, but I will say from a just picturesque standpoint, nothing better than going out to Arrowhead on like a, especially like a Memorial Day weekend or a good summer holiday weekend when the boats are oh, busy. Oh man, yeah. And you get to that hole and you get to tee off and you got the boat traffic and it's, it is, it's definitely a special site. Waterway number five at the beautiful Arrowhead Country Club. That is a signature hole. Uh, one of a few there at Arrowhead Country Club. Jake, thank you so much for joining us and uh, giving us your story in the game of golf and uh, talking shop about Arrowhead Country Club. Do you want to stick around and we'll talk some more Myrtle Beach golf on the back nine? Sounds great. All right. All right. Let's do it. The back nine. Okay, the back nine. Uh, it is uh, already February. Aaron, give us an update on spring rounds in Myrtle Beach. Busy. Yeah. Um, very busy. We have some dates, uh, weekends, actually. I don't want to say dates. We've got several weekends that are already jam-packed uh, mid, mid, late April, early May. Um, I mean, there's there's some times out there, but they're, they're probably you know going to be your afternoon tea times you're looking at at this point if, if you're booking. Um, but there are some other dates still out there available, but it is going to be a busy spring based on everything we've seen so far. So that's good. And, and prices cause they're dynamic or go up. Yeah. Yeah. I think, um, you know, you're probably going to be looking at, at some, some higher rates for a lot of courses. If you're looking at that April, May time frame because they have seen a, a large portion of their, you know, their prime times that have booked up at this point so it's filling up guys but there's still some time in april and may for a great golf trip to myrtle beach so go to mbgolf.com call aaron call his team and uh, they can put together a great spring package for you how is fall shaping up uh we have actually seen an increase in fall traffic uh, especially since the turn of the year yeah um so i think which we know last fall was one of the busiest falls uh, you know in golf that myrtle beach has ever seen so I think we're going to see that trend continue, uh, especially with the weather we had yeah. last fall. I mean, if we can anywhere know, close to that, you we're going to have another great fall. Anything. Could not beat that October. Yeah, yeah. Any anything close to that, and uh, I think it's uh, that's probably why people are already booking because they got a dose of that <laughs> fall weather last year. So uh, coming back for more this year. Jake, how are your rounds shaping up in spring? Really good right now. Yeah, I mean the spring is. Uh, it's it's looking really strong, honestly. Um, especially those April and early May, those dates. They're looking through some dates, and honestly, there's several days where we don't really have hardly any inventory left. So it's a good problem to have. I uh, wish we did have more times, but yeah, that's a great problem to have, and it's uh, it's a, it just continues to get better and better. It seems. I had to squeeze Arrowhead in on, for a group. Uh, actually, it was earlier this week. And I had to find the day that they could actually play Arrowhead on their itinerary. Yeah, for that and that's week. three nines we're talking about. So, you know, they have some a little more flexibility. So other courses are, are getting tightened up too. So guys, get to mbgolf.com and, and book your trip now. If you're thinking about it uh, with your guys and girls, now's the time to book. Yep. Um, the accommodation of the episode, Aaron, so – We've got a lot of great accommodations in North Myrtle Beach. We also have access to some premium oceanfront resort accommodations in Central Myrtle Beach, which is great for anywhere you're going to play. Um, I picked two. We've we've got access to rooms at the Paradise Resort and Bayview Resort. So the Bayview Resort, I think, is closer to your more budget-friendly 
packager that wants to stay on the ocean front, they've got one, two, three, and four bedroom condos available, and they have a lot of great bedding options, um, on-site coffee shop, and you know all the great amenities that you'd want in an oceanfront resort, but for a great price. Yeah, uh, absolutely. One of the most popular room types uh, that we have with Bayview is the two bedrooms. Got four, uh, four double beds. Um, so you're not getting the small twin bed, you're actually getting a full size bed. So you can do four golfers in a two bedroom, which, you know, helps create a good price overall for the group. Um, and between Bayview and Paradise, they're located, uh, real convenient for that kind of central area golf courses. So such as Arrowhead, I mean, they're just, you know, it's just a few minutes drive to Arrowhead. They're close to the airport. Um, so real convenient location. Right in downtown Myrtle Beach, right yeah. on the boardwalk. So a lot of great action and, and stuff to do there, eat, drink, shop. Yep. So um, the other being Paradise Resort, accommodation of the episode, that's very close to Bayview. And it is, um, you know, a more of a luxurious oceanfront resort. Um, larger one, two, three, and four bedroom, all oceanfront, big balconies, full kitchens, which Bayview has full kitchens uh, too in a lot of their um, accommodations. But that is uh, more of a premium priced property. It's got on-site dining, which is great. But either are great options uh, if you're coming to play golf and uh, want to be centrally located to everything, like you said. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you, you won't have far to go um, if you schedule your courses and your dinners and everything accordingly. Yeah. So. And, and just like the tea times, uh, those rooms are filling up too. They are. Yeah, that's uh, we've seen a lot of that with accommodations, um, which – Go hand in hand. A yeah. lot of golf groups coming into town, so yeah, they're they're coming to uh, play. They got got to have somewhere to stay too. Yes, so. they do. And we got you covered for playing and staying at mbgolf.com. So please uh, go to our website and um, ask about Bayview or the Paradise Resort when you're putting your elite package together and playing Airhead Country Club. We talk a lot about golf on this podcast being the teed off podcast, but Myrtle beach is such a great destination for, for things to do, um, off the course. And I want to open up a section, uh, of this, uh, podcast where we talk about some of those things, because I think even we take it for granted, all the great things you can do off the course, uh, being locals here. Um, you know, it's just right in our backyard. I think something that would be really cool if I was on a golf trip with my buddies would be to go to a brewery. And so many have popped up in the last few years in the Myrtle Beach area. And I've got a couple to to name that will have you covered on the south, central, or north end of the beach. But there's a a whole bunch, and we're going to have a a great blog post describing all these in great detail. But on the south end in Myrtle's Inlet, you've got Voodoo Brewing, which is a cool vibe. Um, They've got live music and seasonal craft beers, and it's just a a really fun place to hang out and grab a bite. Uh, Centrally located in the Arts District, um, which is, you know, being upgraded in downtown Myrtle Beach and is just so cool, is Grand Strand Brewing Company. And that is really cool place to to get a bite and uh, when the weather's good sit outside and uh, have a have a craft beer they focus on a lot of local uh, beers they've got some Conway ales and I believe the salty golfer has his own uh, beer there mm-hmm. so it, it's really cool place they've got a Grateful Dead cover band that comes all the time so that place is a really cool place to hang out and then on the north end in, in Barefoot Landing uh, is Crooked Hammock Brewery and there you can do a brewery tour and have a great bite to eat. They have an awesome outdoor space too, Aaron. We yeah. we had a uh, we had a party there, company party there. <laughs> so we're quite partial to that place, and that's on the north end. All of those places are right off of Highway 17, so it's just a zip away from wherever you're staying or wherever you if you're coming off the course. Um, grab a bite and a beer. And uh, watch a game or just recap the round with your friends. I think a brewery is a great place to be uh, in Myrtle Beach. It is, and they it seems like they've all really geared towards that outdoor atmosphere too. You know, like with the uh, Crooked Hammock and uh, you know Grand Stern Brewery and things like that. They've got that great outdoor you know atmosphere. You can just kind of chill out, watch the game, or they've got. Um, games you can play you know i mean when we were at crooked hammock there were uh, you look around people were playing all kinds of games i know you know so i love it um it's funny i i love bars but i'm terrible at bar games so yeah. i just kind of <laughs> sit back and watch but 
<laughs> well, everybody in the group's got their own, you know, they got the guy that watches, the guy that runs it, the guy yeah. that gets into trouble. <laughs> so, I mean, you can do all that at these breweries. <laughs> so, Jake, have you heard of, of players, you know, talking about going to a brewery after the round and stuff like that or ask yeah. your opinion um, for it? Yeah, definitely. I mean, like you said, Grand Strand Brewery is not far from us at all, probably 15 minutes at most. So, uh, it's not a not a hard thing to do is hop over there and have a couple of cold ones and hang out for a little while. Yeah, I, I think, you know, golf packages, they've got their big dinners that they plan, at, you know, at nice places. I, you know, I think a brewery night is definitely a great night, too. So think about uh, the breweries uh, in the Myrtle Beach area the next time you are uh, on your golf trip to Myrtle Beach. All right, guys, last but certainly not least, teed off. This is the section of the show where we talk about something that uh, – Grinds our gears a bit about the game of golf or the industry of golf or maybe a personal golf story. Um, I will kick it off. Um, and Jake, I don't know if this is if you can relate to this or your your team can relate to this, but I've been playing some golf around some other courses lately, and I know it's hard to find good help. And and when you get somebody enthusiastic that's willing to learn, you bring them on. Um, but I think the new hire on the turf crew you have to be careful with. So one, I wouldn't let them set up unmonitored or unsupervised. So I, I played a course recently where the hole was on a slope and multiple holes were and uh, were really close to the uh, the collar. And it makes you kind of think, well, is this like superintendent's revenge or did we do something wrong? Um, my buddy had a story where he was setting up and he's, uh, he's a veteran of the industry and they had a new hire and he saw him coming up the middle of the fairway in a gas powered gator. He kept coming and kept coming, kept coming. Drove all the way onto the green, stopped, got out, said, hey, so-and-so is looking for you. And yeah, I was like, uh, okay, uh, but but you can't do that. I said, do what? So you you can't be here. He's like, I work here. I said, no, you can't be on the green. <laughs> he's like, oh, okay. Walks off the green. And, uh. and he's like, no, no, the, the cart can't be on the green. <laughs> Oh, poor so, guy. Yeah, so I don't know how long he lasted, but um, <laughs> anyway, uh, that's not a knock against turf crews because I know they do a great job, and like at Airhead Country Club, everything's green and pristine, but I know a new hire probably has to be watched rather closely because that experience they say they had might not be uh, the full truth. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that's my teed off. Uh, Jake, what tees you off? Yeah, so I'm going to go with, uh, we get a lot of phone calls, obviously, and when I call somewhere, when I call for a reservation to get dinner or something, obviously I know what time I want and how many people I've got. So it's funny, There's sometimes we'll get some calls and the guy will ask for about a 9.30 tea time, where we have a 9.27 available, which is three minutes prior to 9.30. And he's like, oh, it's way too early. Too early. <laughs> I love how about, it. How about 10 o'clock? It's like, okay. So then you give him that. and Usually it'll work out eventually. But, uh, Can't stay yeah, out just, and have that yeah. extra beer for there's, you know, there's three minutes or a bit minutes. too early. But that actually does happen a lot more often than, uh, than I would think. But I said 9.30-ish. Yeah, we hear it too, though. You'll get somebody that same thing. Yeah, with you know, 10, 10 o'clock. How about 9.58? Ah, no, like closer to 10.30. You know, it's like, <laughs> we, we get it. Yeah, we know. <laughs> so, it's all good. Oh, that's great. Yeah, that, that would kind of tee me off if, if you have pretty much exactly what they're asking for, but that's not really what they're asking for, but you should have known yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, we just get a kick out of it. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Aaron, uh, what tees you off? Well, I don't know if it's going to be so much a teed off this week. Now, this, will, this might tee off some other people. But I, uh, I was fortunate enough um, this past weekend, I played in a uh, golf outing for a uh, golf pro um, that recently passed away here in the Myrtle Beach area, Frank Monk. So they kind of had a celebration of life golf outing for him, and we all went out and played golf and had a good time, celebrated Frank, and it was a good day. Um, but the one thing I noticed, um, now I was excited because it was the first round I got to play. I was recently gifted a Blue Tees speaker with... Oh, nice. uh, uh, you know, with the built-in GPS and everything. So I was excited to try it out. So I, I always like music on the golf course. And as we were playing, the, the course we played, there were holes you can kind of hear. And, of course, everybody's interacting. But I, I felt like I heard music all day. 
all around. Like everybody just had music playing, having a good time. It was it was a good day. And I was like, you know, I said, we really need more music on the golf course because nobody was bothered by it. And I love it. Now, I do get some people can turn it up a little loud, but I mean, I had mine. I was testing out the limits of the, the speaker that day. So I had it going. Uh, but everybody seemed to enjoy it. And I know a lot of people don't like music on the golf course, but I'm a big fan of it, and I think there should be more of it. I think if everybody listened to music, it would be a more enjoyable round. I, I think I, I like that. Jake, what what do you think about music on the course? I'm a music guy. I mean, I, I don't like it real loud, and I don't want it to be like heavy metal or anything like that. But uh, Well, you, uh, Jake, I'm, it's a wonder we don't play very often. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I mean, I definitely uh, I would prefer music. I mean, it just makes it more fun. I think the last few years, it's really been a trend toward that. I mean, I remember bringing, you know, my own Bluetooth speaker out there not too long ago, you know, maybe several years ago, but not too, too long ago, where it was almost like taboo. You know, you're like, oh, I'm going to play music out here. But now the carts come with speakers. Oh, yeah, they're like built Bluetooth. in. Bluetooth. So it's like, and, and old, young, every, all ages are, are playing music. And I think that's cool to see. Now, so I agree with you. tell you when I started with a speaker on the golf course it was when the ipod first came out yes the ipod <laughs> came out and wow. i had um i believe i bought a speaker on ebay it wasn't even bluetooth it was battery you had power. to plug it in yeah. you put batteries yeah. in it and you plug it in and we were playing in an outing um but i had the music by now it doesn't it didn't get nearly as loud as some of the some of the speakers do now but uh, somebody said after the round, they're like, did you hear music out there? It was like nobody ever thought See, about bringing that, music out on the about, golf course. It's just like, ooh, I'm going to play music. You know, it's like, ooh, should I put my headphones on? Like, what, yeah. what, what's what's happening here? So but I went from a little speaker that was about the size of your thumb that plugged into an iPod to now I got GPS it's an whole looking industry at me. Now. And, they're yeah. magnetic to the frame of the yeah. cart. I mean, it's a whole industry now. Yeah. Oh, ha hey, hats off to Blue Tees. Yeah. That, that thing yeah, did you like phenomenal. it? Phenomenal. Yeah, it is. It's great. How about the GPS? Was it accurate yardage? Right on. We actually, uh, one of the guys playing with me had his rangefinder, and obviously, you know, what's displaying on mine. Now, you can, they've got different subscriptions you can get for this thing. Um, I'm just on, like, the basic. But So I had, you know, front, middle, back, and when uh, the guy in our group would range, he'd use his rangefinder and give me a number always right there with it is so, it an lcd screen that tells you the front middle back or is it audio yeah uh, no it's it's uh, it's an lcd screen so you can flip through though there's got like if depending on the subscription you have there's all kinds of stats oh, that cool. this thing will give you if if you want to use them for me probably a little more than i'll get into um because i don't i don't need to know how short my drive was <laughs> or anything like yeah. that so like it it will give you your average driving distance it'll keep stats for every round you play that's it's, cool it's amazing wow yeah so it's i just wanted to test it out and see how it was and uh we we had it we had it cranking out there but i didn't feel bad about having it turned up because everybody else did so. yeah uh, well I, I think i agree with you i think there should be more music and i, I like that it's heading that way and there there are those that will strongly oppose that but i don't care so well, you can be a purist and a traditionalist, but I also think you can be a little narrow-minded. Yeah. Now, I will say this. I know my surroundings when I'm out there. So if I if I see a group and you you kind of know what group isn't going to enjoy music, yeah, just turn it down. Turn it yeah. down. Well, let, I, them, I, let them hit their shots and then move on. I think when you down. get on tight spots of a golf course and yeah. you're, you're coming close to where somebody's teeing off but you're on another hole, yeah. I think you, you have to have – Golf etiquette still rules all yeah, to me. Yeah, you got to respect the other players on the course. So, and people that they're gonna, there's gonna be plenty of people that don't don't have etiquette. Yeah. Um, but that's music. That's anything on the golf course. Now, if so. I can find an outing, or if, if you got any tournaments at Arrowhead, Jake, that you know are gonna be like, hey, which there used to be one, um, where you can just play the music, have a few drinks, have a good time. I'm in. Cool. Well, those were great teed offs. It's been a great episode. Uh, remember to go to mbgolf.com uh, to book the Elite Package that has Arrowhead Country Club on it and uh, ask about staying at the Paradise Resort or the Bayview Resort. Definitely very convenient to Arrowhead. Uh, Jake Benton, our guest, PGA professional of Arrowhead Country Club. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, thank you, everyone, for listening, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for listening to Teed Off. 
Visit mbgolf.com and follow us on Instagram at Podcast for the latest episodes and news.